beach vibes, sand dunes, and warm, breezy summers, this hot spot in North Carolina's Outer Banks brings kiteboarders and beachgoers from all over to come and claim their piece of a picture-perfect beach holiday. Today, we are talking about Cape Hatteras. My name is Crystal Vanessa. Welcome to Destinations. Hatteras Island is located just off of the coast of North Carolina, and this long, narrow barrier island divides the Pacific Ocean from the infamous Pamlico Sound. And this place has so much to offer, from the tourist hotspot of Nags Head, all the way down south to the friendly seaside towns of Avon and Buxton. This is an amazing family-friendly destination, and it's a perfect place to settle into summer. So today we are going to be talking about some of the different hotspots and hidden gems for Hatteras kiteboarding, and after that we'll get into everything else you need to know before you go. All right, let's start with windy season. So kite season in Hatteras goes from about April to October, and the wind here can be all over the map, and it can blow in any direction. You may find yourself squeaking out a session on a 17 meter or struggling to hold on to a seven. You could be having the most perfect 16 knot session on a warm summer day, or be getting lit to shreds on a rainy, windy, stormy day. Or you're equally just as likely to find yourself sitting on the beach wondering where the wind went. When it comes to Hatteras, you could have the best kiting you've had or the least kiting you've had. And the forecast here is hard to predict and it changes frequently. So the best thing you can do if you're planning a kite trip here is bring a full quiver of kites because you will need it. Let's talk weather. So summers in Hatteras can be super hot and humid. Expect temperatures up to 30 degrees Celsius, which is about 90 Fahrenheit. And if you're here in the early or late part of the season, temperatures can get as low as 50 Fahrenheit or about 10 Celsius. If you're coming in the summer, you probably won't even need a sweater. The coldest you're gonna be is when you walk into the grocery store and get blasted by the AC. Now, water temperature. In the sound, the water in the summer is super warm. You can probably get by in board shorts and bikinis or maybe just a rash vest. If you're kiting on the surf side, you'll definitely want a 3-2. The water there is a bit colder. And if you're kiting in the early or late part of the season, the water does get really cold in the off season, so a five millimeter wetsuit will definitely come in handy for you then. Kite spots in Hatteras, you are spoiled for choice. You could ride five spots a day, every day for a week and still have dozens left to explore. Typically, your spot choice will come down to which way the wind is blowing because the best kite spot on one direction can be the worst kite spot on the other. So we are going to give you a very quick rundown on some of our favorite kite spots from north to south on the island, but you will definitely want to check out the written spot guide here because we've included more detailed information like which direction works best, what level works best, how to access the spot, and more. So. Let's get into the quick rundown, starting with one of my favorites, Planet of the Apes. So this is an epic soundside downwinder and one of the funnest downwind runs I've ever done. It's known for having super flat water in some of the channels and outlets all along the coastline that you can rip around and explore. But this downwind run works best on a southwest wind and for advanced riders only, because once you're out there, you are out there. You will not have much help if you get stuck. Now Kite Point is a super friendly kite spot good for any level and it is located south just past Avon. The best riding conditions here are in northwest or southwest winds, and the spot does get pretty busy on windy days, so it's not hard to find. The water here is relatively flat, two small chops, water shallow. It's a great place for kiters that are just getting their sea legs or wanting to go for a fun session. Next is Buxton Slicks, which is just a little further past Kite Point, just before the town of Buxton. The little grass islands around here make for some epic flat water and fun conditions on northwest winds. On other directions, it can be pretty gusty, and here the beach is tiny, so the best thing to do is actually launch up a kite point and downwind down to Buxton Slicks. Next is the Cove. So this spot is just around the corner from Lighthouse Beach in Buxton, and this can be an epic wave spot when the conditions are just right. If you're a wave rider, Hatteras Island offers the best waves on the East Coast, and the Cove takes epic to the next level when things line up. So here, the shape of the coast allows the waves to peel for eternity. So if you've got the skill and opportunity, this spot is beyond words. Now, this spot is only accessible by 4x4 and it should be reserved for advanced riders who can respect the strong current and pumping conditions. 
Frisco is just southwest of Buxton, and this is a perfect spot for people that don't really know what they want. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump from the surf side to the sound side. So you can go and get a piece of flat water on the sound side and then head over and catch some waves on the surf. If you're looking for an ocean side downwinder, this one works great on southwest winds. Uh, you definitely want to check out the ferry docks to Frisco Pier downwinder. So the washout is another south side spot past Frisco that is all levels friendly. And this spot works best when the wind is a little bit so-so over a kite point. This spot is perfect for beginners or those who are looking for some shallow flat water. And there's plenty of parking here, but the spot does get a bit crowded. So that's the short and sweet on some of our favorite kite spots in Hatteras. So to find out more information on these and other spots, click on the little eye at the top of this video for a link to the written spot guide. For riding level, kiteboarders of every level, from beginner to pro, will find something to love about Hatteras. This is a great place for beginner riders that just want to spend some time on the board and get comfortable, or intermediate riders who want to try something new, or those advanced riders who are looking for a trick progression. Whatever the case, kiters who are looking for some adventurous sessions will definitely have a memorable trip here. Style-wise, you'll see literally every style of kiteboarding here in Hatteras. It's pretty chilled out conditions for those looking to free ride. Freestylers will froth over the flat water slicks. Wave riders will be stoked on some surfside sessions. And strapless freestylers will be able to practice their craft both on the surf and the sound. Foilers will have the most opportunity to ride, especially on the light wind days, but a short mast is essential here in the sound. And Hatteras also has a slider park, so those interested in park style riding will definitely want to check that out. Facilities wise, the towns and kite centers in Hatteras are pretty well equipped especially in the bigger centers of Avon and Nags Head. Many of the kite beaches, however, have absolutely zero facilities, so make sure to bring your pump. The best spots to ride are those out-of-town spots where you can pump up and ride without any fees or restrictions, but the flip side of that is you will definitely need to be prepared and bring everything else you need like water, snacks, sun protection, etc. For a beginner-friendly kite spot, Hatteras has a fair few things to watch out for, the chief one being the very sharp shells in the grass and in the water. So. Watch where you step, and I highly recommend having booties or something to protect your feet from cuts. And what cuts your feet can chop your gear as well, so make sure to double check your launch and landing spots before you put your gear down. Always be cautious launching here in Hatteras. The wind conditions here can be pretty gusty, especially on the sound side. Depending on where you're launching, there can be any kind of obstacle around you like piers, rocks, or trees. So take your time and ask for assistance if it's needed. Now, some of the south side kite spots are pretty close to the power line. And I say that singularly because there is literally just one power line that serves the island, so at all costs, avoid getting your gear too close to the power line. If you're riding on the surf side, be sure to only ride in conditions where it's flowing cross shore, cross on, or onshore. Otherwise, you might end up out to sea. On the sound side, the water can be a bit dirty, so be sure to wash off after kiting and take extra care of any injuries that you may have. And for comfort's sake, don't forget to keep sunscreen and bug spray in your car to make sure you have the most comfortable sessions. So that about covers everything you need to know on kiting in Hatteras. So if you want more detailed information, of course, be sure to check out the written spot guide in the description of this video. And now let's get into everything you need to know to plan your trip here in Hatteras. Let's start with how to get to Hatteras. So the closest major airport to Hatteras Island is Norfolk, Virginia, which is ORF. And if you're staying in Avon, this is about a three hour drive. A couple other nearby large airports are Richmond and Raleigh, which are about four hours drive each. Always leave yourself a bit of buffer time if you are flying in or driving here. This spot is definitely severely affected by weather and storms. So flights are often delayed or canceled or roads may experience delays as well. So leave yourself some extra time so you don't miss out on too many sessions. Now you definitely need a rental car in this spot, so I would rent one or drive your own over, but taxis and Ubers are not a cost-effective or reliable option here on the island. A little side tip for driving here is respect each and every single rule of the road. All I'm saying is traffic laws here are very well enforced and I only wish someone had told me before I came. So where to stay in Hatteras? There are tons of little towns all across the island from Nags Head to Rodanth, Waves, Avon and Buxton. There's tons to choose from, but summer weekends do get busy, so be sure to plan ahead. If you're traveling with young family and non-kiters, Nags Head has a ton of other stuff to do and keep everybody busy, but this spot does get pretty busy with tourist crowds. For relaxed, more kite-specific accommodations close to the epic Southside kite spots, Avon and Buxton are great places to stay. Avon especially has a lot of options for shops, restaurants, and grocery stores. So the best way to do this trip is to come with a group and stay in one of the managed vacation rentals with one of the many property management companies like Outer Beaches Realty. 
If you're in a group, this is the most economic option and the most fun. So if you are staying in one of these vacation rentals, there are several rooms that you can split amongst however many people you bring. You'll find multi-bedroom properties for $1,000 a week or less, but if you have a few more people and a bit of a bigger budget, you can find much nicer, bigger houses for several thousand a week. If you're traveling as an individual or a couple, uh, there are many hotel options on the island. They go for about 100 to 200 US a night. If you are on a tighter budget though and you are traveling solo, you can check into a group housing option like Kite Club Hatteras. Camping is another popular option on Hatteras Island and there are loads of campgrounds in Waves and Frisco. And you even have the option to rent cabins if you don't have your own trailer or tent. Wet to eat and drink in Hatteras. So Hatteras Island is definitely more of a day scene. The most action you're gonna see here is on the water or in your vacation rental. Not too many nightlife options here unless you're here during one of the events. If you're in a big group and doing lots of cooking and barbecuing at home, your best friends here will be the grocery stores, and those are located in Avon and Nagpud. If you are dining out, there are some pretty good restaurant options, especially down in Avon, and one of our favorites was Pangea Tavern, which has awesome, delicious southern food, fresh seafood, and a pretty great bar. Other favorites in Avon are Oceana's for seafood, and Ugly Mug makes a pretty good coffee. Hopefully, you'll be spending most of your time in Hatteras kiteboarding, but whatever the weather, there is definitely plenty of action to be had here. Surfing is the other main sport in Hatteras, so bring a surfboard or rent one. You will get waves here basically every day, although some days are pretty small. When the swell is good, there are epic wave conditions here on Hatteras Island. If it's totally flat and not windy, you will love supping and kayaking on the sound side. There is plenty to explore down here in the little channels and islands. If you've got the right permits and gear or can get your hands on them, 4x4ing on the beach and fishing are pretty great options. If you don't have either of those things, uh, bird watching is actually a pretty good option as well. Now, if you've got a family to entertain or there is absolutely no wind in sight, Nags Head is probably your best bet. So they've got mini golf, laser tag, go-karts, a theater, climbing wall, escape rooms, basically everything you could want in a tourist hotspot. So Hatteras Island is on the map as a kiteboarding destination for a reason, and this place is well worth a visit for a kiteboarder. Whether you're just riding some of Hatteras' major hot spots or going out and exploring the hidden gems, the well-equipped kiter will have an amazing trip here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to hear about the next destination. And if you have any questions about kiteboarding in Hatteras or planning a trip to the spot, leave us a comment or hit me up on social media. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Destinations. Hey guys, Raigo here. So I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Destinations, and uh, we're trying something a little bit new on our channel here and going more behind the scenes. So if you're curious to learn more about Hatteras, the featured riders, or just the production of this episode, you can click the link that I've included at the end of this video. So if you click the link at the end of this video or the eye icon for our travel guide, we'll include that session's video log and you can come along on the trip and just see a little bit more of Hatteras. And we won't be doing this on every episode of Destinations, but on a handful of them you can expect a, a companion video log just showcasing the trip and uh, giving you a little bit more. <laughs>